Hello everybody and welcome to Denver Police News. I'm Sergeant Steve Warnicke. One of the things that we're able to do here is provide more information to the public than ever before and we're also able today to give you an opportunity to hear things that you couldn't normally have heard. We're here with Detective uh, Ted Benet of the Denver Police Department Missing and Exploited Persons Unit. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So there's been a tremendous amount of national interest regarding missing person cases lately and I was hoping you could walk us through the anatomy of a case and how it works. And I'd like to make note that we're not talking about any case in particular, that this is an uh, opportunity to tell the public how a detective works a missing person's case from beginning to end. So walk us through that. What is our obligation when we get the report of a missing person? So uh, first of all, there is no minimum period of time um, uh, which uh, a person must wait in order to report someone missing. Uh, and so when, when I get the report from patrol of a missing person, my first um, job is to get them on, it's called the National Crime Information Computer, and that's the computer database by which law enforcement securely talks to each other. Um, and uh, once I've done that, then uh, I look for leads in the case. Uh, I check all the different databases to which we have access, and I uh, and, and the other missing person detective look for things, um, places that we might find this person readily. Maybe they've been incarcerated. Maybe um, they're in a hospital. A lot of our missing people end up in hospitals. So you do detective work once you find, you, you want to follow up on every lead. Yes, sir. When that comes to an end or you've exhausted your leads, uh, at what point do we turn to the public, the media for help? Every case is different, uh, but the public can um, be a great tool in having eyes everywhere, of course, in calling in leads to us. So um, if there is a, uh, if we get a case that has circumstances that um, lead us to believe that maybe this person is out and about or that leads from the public would help us in finding that person, then we can go to, um, to the media or put something out as a department um, requesting tips, leads, uh, any information that people might have found. One of the tricky cases involves the distinction between juveniles and adults. Talk about the investigative differences or the protocol differences in those two cases. It's not a crime for an adult to go missing. Um, and so, um, and, and the reason is because people have a right to privacy and people have the right not to be found. Um, there are several circumstances, um, like maybe a domestic violence situation where someone is fleeing an abusive relationship um, in, which, in which case they don't want to be found by certain people. Um, but we have to balance that with the, the reporting person's right to know that their loved one is okay. Mm. So uh, the, in a distinction between adults and juveniles, um, and, it, and it runs the, the gambit of age, um, then there's a vulnerability issue. Uh, and so if we get a case of, let's say, a 16 or 17-year-old who um, you know, if they don't have any reported disabilities, we will approach that case differently than we would, let's say, a case of an 11-year-old who um, may or may not have some, some issues with disability, but, but would be, by virtue of their age, more vulnerable to, um, to danger. Let's say we find somebody and they're okay. What then is our job at that point? What do we do? So we have a duty to um, make sure that they're okay, make sure that they're alert, they know who they are, where they are, they're not a danger to themselves or others, and, but then we also have a duty to respect their right to privacy. So law enforcement, when they contact someone who's been reported missing, uh, and they're an adult, um, law enforcement will ask for their permission to locate them to the reporting person. And they will also offer that reporting person's phone number information to that missing person. If the missing person gives their permission, great, then that law enforcement will call the reporting person and make the reunion and let them know that everything's okay and where they're at. If the person who's been reported missing declines or does not give permission to be found, then uh, we still respect the reporting person's right to know that they're okay, but we do not disclose their location to the reporting person because we are over and above respecting the missing person's right to privacy. I mean, Ted, can we find somebody, detain them, demand to know what they've been up to, question them, um, any of those things? Not without 
probable cause that a crime has been committed or reasonable suspicion that, that there is some reason to believe that we need to dig further, that this is more than just a straightforward missing persons case. How many cases do you work on an average day? On average, maybe 10 new cases a day. By and large, um, they are found okay. I think uh, roughly on average, about half are located within the first three days. Any of them turned into homicides? I mean, if you, I, obviously not hard and fast numbers here, but if you had to guess, how many of them turn into something really serious like a homicide? Maybe between one to three a year will end up being, being a homicide. Um, in which case, we will partner with the homicide unit to investigate it. So what's a great day for you at the missing persons unit? So our goal is to reunite people, and that's a good feeling when we're able to uh, bring the missing people and the reporting people together, people that have uh, been worried about them, and we enjoy that, and um, we strive to do that in, in every case. With all the attention, national attention, on missing person cases, we hope this sheds some light on our process and protocol and how we work a case, as well as gives you information that you've never had before. Thanks for watching. I'm Sergeant Steve Warnicke for Denver Police News.